As a movie critic, I feel I should confess to everybody that I've never seen Roadhouse. So with the release of Jake Gyllenhaal's remake, I decided to see both this weekend and hear my thoughts on both movies. So you can get a double review today. Mm. Hello everybody, welcome to Gen X Reviews and Roadhouse. Let's go ahead and talk about that. I'm gonna talk about the first one and the second one and just give you my overall opinion at the later end of the conversation. So again, I'm gonna go with spoilers again. So just FYI, if you haven't seen it, don't watch this until you've seen the film. But right now, let's talk about the 1989 classic, I guess I wanna call it, Roadhouse of Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott. Escort this gentleman to the door. Now again, why have I not seen this film? I can't tell you, but again, I've caught glimpses of it every now and then while I was on cable. A lot of my friends loved it. I, again, never just had the opportunity to sit down and watch it, and I finally did this weekend. And <laughs> it's an 80s movie. It's a cheesy, fun, self-aware 80s movie. That's all it is. So when I give my thoughts on this movie, I don't have any allegiance to it. I don't have any, like, nostalgic sentimental value to it i saw it for what it was and that's all you're gonna get who is that guy name stone so in this movie you have patrick swayze who was a sought after bouncer he's the best because he's dalton name stone and you have this new business owner who's purchasing his area who wants to get rid of the riffraff so he's bringing in dalton to clean up the place for him and with swayze's dalton i will give him this it's very stoic he's very cool it's very swayze and I, I do like how he's more professional in this movie compared to Gyllenhaal's. He has rules, but he's guys open to the business of bartending and restaurants. He's looking at the bartenders and what, looking at what they're serving, how much they're wasting, etc. if they're pocketing any money. So he's got all eyes on the business. It's his ship, and I respect that. That takes a lot of discipline. Roadhouse. This is just a job for him. Once he's done, he's out. But again, he's got no emotional attachment to this town until he starts seeing a doctor who stitches up his wound. They have a romance, but then he finds out that this business owner that he's friends with named Red is the father of the doctor he's dating. So there is his emotional tether. And then he finds out, I'm just going to call the guy Monopoly Man, is slowly more or less siphoning money from these businesses and taking more and more each year. And he destroys this one business owner's property. And that's when his emotional tether is now linked to the town. He's not going anywhere till he cleans up and starts killing people. <laughs> And then again, you have Sam Elliott who shows up later in the film, which again, if I could be reincarnated to any man in the next life, I would want to be Sam Elliott and sound like him. He comes in for a few fights and a quick appearance. And I actually thought McGregor was going to play the role of Sam Elliott in the remake. That would have been cool, but that's not what happened. But anyway, his best friend Sam Elliott dies because of these hijinks. <laughs> And that's really what ignites the fire in his passion to really just take over the city. More or less like Rambo. He infiltrates the bad guy's house at the end, kills everybody. And while he's surrounded by dead bodies, the police come about and they all ask, what happened here? We didn't see anything. Happy ending. No questions. <laughs> he goes off skinny dipping. The end. <laughs> Roadhouse. Uh, so, again, the movie, I wasn't expecting a classic. I have, again, no nostalgia ties to it. It's just a cheesy bar movie with boobs, sex scenes craziness some great music and that's all i saw it for again so it was okay will i ever see it again probably not it does have some quotable lines in it but again it is what it is and then that takes us to roadhouse the remake now the remake i will say one thing that i love more about it than the original is the storyline of dalton dalton's more of a fleshed out character he's more or less a killer and i love the backstory that he has being a ufc fighter who accidentally accidentally killed one of his friends or opponents in the ring and people are curious why he did that so he's got this notorious reputation about killing a man in the ring so people don't want to fight him they know who he is so i do like that background on dalton other than him he's just dalton the name is dalton. he's got a background it makes sense so it's more layered like shrek says and i appreciate a couple things about jake Hall. again he's a great actor he's one of my favorite actors and i crawl one of my favorite movies but the dude got fucking shredded in this movie. So he looks really good. But again, he brought his own type of uh, style to Dalton. He didn't really replicate Patrick Swayze's Dalton in any way. This one, he's just carefree. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks about him. He's not. He doesn't have rules. He's not really coming into this bar as a bouncer. He's more or less, I guess, coming in as security. I don't know how they established that role, but he's being paid 5K a, a week 
compared to the 500 a week that Swayze was being paid, hell inflation. It was very comical. It was also very funny. Like some of the banter back and forth that he has, is, there's this one fight at the beginning of the film where he's telling the guys, look, do you want to do this? How far is the hospital? I'm warning you. It's 20 minutes away, guys. You don't want to do this. You sure you want to do this? Okay, I'm not responsible for this. He kicks all these guys' asses, and all these guys are just laying on the ground, and he's like, call an ambulance, and no one calls an ambulance, so he has to drive the guys whose ass he kicks to the hospital, which I thought was pretty funny, and he's signing them in, so the scene continues on, so I do, how, I do appreciate how it's a parody of itself, and again, it's very comical. Some of these bad guys are saying some funny-ass things, and I'm like, okay, this... It's like a cartoon. I mean, it's it's very self-aware of what the movie they're trying to recreate is, and they're having fun with it. So I had more fun with the remake. Now, Conor McGregor comes in, and I thought he was going to be the Sam Elliott role, but no, he's the villain, which I think is an upgrade compared to the original. And Conor McGregor is is a, is a fucking, he's a comic. He's a comic book character. The, the way he walks in every scene is just hilarious. Everything he says is over the top. And I can tell when they signed him, they go, look, he's not a fucking actor, but he's a great fighter. He's got presence and he'd be a great opponent to the UFC character we're writing in this movie. Here's the direction they gave McGregor. We want you to be you, but amp it up to 10. Just do whatever you want. You know, hear the bullet points of what you have to say in the scene, but just go have fun. Do it again. Another take. Yeah, just go ahead and improvise. What would you say in the ring? We got it. Done. Cut and see. Some of the direction in the fight scenes are really good. There's this one sequence where the cameraman actually jumps in the bar, inside of the bar, while Conor McGregor and Dalton are fighting. I do like that. And when they go out of the bar, the camera follows him. So I do appreciate some of the fun direction they had in this film. The villain that McGregor's working for is your typical, you know, rich white guy who is trying to buy out the real estate. It's more or less the same villain from that one song. <laughs> It's the same villain from that one movie. Remember uh, One Crazy Summer? It's the same. It's the same villain. He wants to buy out all the restaurants so he can build one mega restaurant. Leave me. If you know what I'm talking about, you're a Gen Xer. But the movie, as it progresses, gets even more ridiculous. The fight sequence at the end was just over the top. This piano's out of tune. Again, it's a Roadhouse movie, and I actually really loved it. I really enjoyed this film. I had a lot of fun with it. Again, seeing the back-to-back, -back, I think, and again, not having any nostalgic ties to the original movie, I think is what helped me with this experience. I, I got some of the references. You can see the Double Deuces restaurant in the background. I understand that um, Jake Gyllenhaal had some sort of Patrick Swayze reference tattoo on his body. I couldn't find it. But again, it knew what it was. It wasn't trying to make a fucking Denis Villeneuve movie or compete with Dune. It was just a fun, silly movie. And I fucking loved it. And I think it's a hell of a lot better than the original. And the fact that they even noted that that Dalton is a killer, like he is a killer who's scared of that darker side of himself. So he tries to keep it back. He tries to keep it away is a really cool storyline. And again, it just adds another layer to Dalton. The name is Dalton. But again, I'm going to recommend both movies. But again, my preference is the remake. Again, a lot of fun with it. It knew what it was doing, and I appreciate that. And again, it's one of those turn off your brain movies and just enjoy the ride and just appreciate some of the. You can tell everybody had fun on this set. You can tell McGregor had fun. Jillian Hall, the directors, everybody had fun with it. I got that tone from watching it. So again, I had a good time watching it. So I'm recommending checking out Roadhouse for just a turn off your brain experience. Thumbs up. Well, that does it for my review, everybody. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, like the video, leave some comments below. What did you think? Are you a loyalist to the original Roadhouse? If not, let me know what you thought about the remake. I really would appreciate it. And again, subscribe. I got to hit 10,000 this year, so help me get there. I'll see you next time. Peace. Roadhouse.